This is my video telling you how I view Assassin's Creed Shadows from the perspective of a Total War player. If you will allow me to permit myself, I will make a small boast that Shogun 2 Total War is a game that covers such a broad depth of Japanese history that everything that could be represented in terms of Assassin's Creed Shadows will come one way or the other from Shogun 2. But I will explain that in more detail at some other point. Is in Total War, is in Assassin's Creed, aren't these different franchises? Yes, they are different franchises, but the similarities of the way that they depict Japanese medieval history is similar. And I'm going to be pointing out those similarities, the differences, and I'm just going to be talking about that as well. But I assure you, while Assassin's Creed Shadow is set during the later stages of the Sengoku Jidai, the age of the warring states, this game is releasing in 2024 and it focuses specifically on Odu Nobunaga's ambition to unite Japan, while we have Naoi and Yasuke being both caught up within this terrible conflict. And Odu Nobunaga did not just have to face the might of Japan, he had to face warrior monks, the Ikoiki, the mighty Takeda clan, who were the finest caravan in all of Japan, the famous Yusuke clan. These were not mere obstacles to overcome and perhaps to Yasuke will be seen that as well, but I experienced all of this Japanese history, all of this wonderful rich history that we're going to be exploring in Assassin's Creed Shadow in a fantastic strategy game set in 2011 called Shogun 2. So let's begin. Because Shogun 2 was a love letter to medieval Japan. Every aspect of the game from its unique art style to the meticulously crafted user interface to having authentic music and historically accurate katana models served the purpose of immersing that player in that specific period. And similar to Assassin's Creed Shadows, Shogun 2 also begins with the decline of central authority and the rise of powerful daimyo wine for control. So both games allow this through the user interface. Both games do allow this, offering the player to have some opportunity to carve their path through this chaotic period of Japanese history. And the user interface of both games I think reflects that one way or the other. While Assassin's Creed Shadows might have a more upbeat, a more dynamic user interface, Shogun 2 is more calligraphic, Shogun 2 is more traditional, but I believe that it, within both games you will get a mix of both to represent this change in culture of Japanese history. And look, let's focus on the turn-based campaign of Shogun 2 versus the open world nature of Assassin's Creed Shadows. And while Shogun 2's turn-based campaign gave players the agency to choose legendary warlords such as Odo Nobunaga, Takeda Shingen and many more, you guided them towards an alternate path in history, towards conquering and unifying Japan. That meant using espionage, that meant using agents, that meant using doing everything in your power as a daimyo to become the warlord of Japan. And while Shogun 2 lacked that third perspective, excluding its limited narrative focus for the expansion of your clan, as opposed to having some big overriding video game Assassin's Creed overarching giant story, which thankfully it doesn't have. But this game, Shogun 2, excelled in letting players create their own stories through their victories and defeats. This story is directly created within the player's mind and if you pick up Shogun 2 today, you will find exactly that. You will find a correlation between the historical time period that you are playing of Shogun 2 and Assassin's Creed Shadows. Be aware that Assassin's Creed Shadows is not changing history so much. It is an alteration of what Japanese history is meant to be. Because I believe it is run by Abstergo Entertainment, so therefore you will always see a distorted lens of history. Whereas in Shogun 2, you are always creating new types of history that would be inconceivable. But it would make logical sense when you come to the end of your campaign, which is very simple. That is, unify Japan. In Assassin's Creed Shadows, you're unifying Japan, but you're fighting against the Templars. But the main theme is that you have to unify Japan. If I were to say one more thing, is that in Shogun 2, there is an availability of campaign-specific mods for crucial periods of Japanese history. That is the Hayabushi Modern Trilogy. And this focuses on the Sekigahara period and the Odu Nobunaga's unification. So if I were to recommend you to go to play Shogun 2, 
what campaign would you want to play in specific Assassin's Creed Times Focus? Then I would say you should download Odu Nobunaga's campaign. And once you play that campaign, you will literally be playing the unification of Japan through Odu Nobunaga's eyes. And you will be in for a fantastic time. And both games of Assassin's Creed, Shadows and Shogun 2 allow you to explore Iga province. Except one does from a top level perspective where in Shogun 2 you would build, expand your cities and you would recruit troops from the peasant population. Whereas in Assassin's Creed Shadows literally what you're going to be doing is that you're going to be exploring Iga province in more ways than one. That is the war in Statesville, perhaps one of the most brutal periods of warfare in Japanese history. Now, obviously, in Assassin's Creed Shadow, you pretty much have the same conflict as well. But there's a difference. This game starts on you taking the role of a daimyo, a powerful feudal warlord that tries to unite Japan under their rule by conquering rival clans and becoming the new shogun. Let's go to Assassin's Creed Shadows. And let me compare something else. That is the battlefield of both games. There are some similarities and there are some differences as well. But let's start with Assassin's Creed Shadows, where I believe it is clear that we are going to be seeing the return of battlefields from Assassin's Creed Odysseys into Assassin's Creed Shadows, which I'm all for, because this is a period of battles itself. But Simply because you have a consequence and dilemma system doesn't mean it has to be some sort of simplified battle system. So, okay, I go and beat this X clan and I win this many numbers for this many clan and that's it, game over. You know, the battlefield system has to make sense. There has to be a real consequence and a real dilemma. So if Yasuke and Naoi or maybe two or one of these characters get involved in a battlefield, it has to have an impact. These battles of the Sengoku Jidai have to matter. They can't just be some, okay, let's say, same old Wipeout Templar Fort, same old Attack Templar XYZ, or Defender's Village from XYZ. They have to be intense black box style missions or have a variety of different missions that are suited for Assassins and Templars. If you go to Shogun 2, however, you would have different types of battles. You'd one day be besieging a fortress, attacking from multiple points of view. You'd be either burning a village or you'd be going and attacking in a battlefield. You know, these, every time I played a battle in Shogun 2, I was always fighting with thousands of samurai and Ashikaru in the battlefield, matchlocks and, and explosion guns and cavalry, you name it. It was a fast pale style of combat. And I do hope that instead of repetitive four assaults in Assassin's Creed Shadows, as I've said, these, and I hope that instead of repetitive four assaults in Assassin's Creed Shadows, the focus needs to be on intense, self-emphasized black box missions while allowing some degree of freedom to fight all our brawls and upgrade the style of battlefields. There are more tactical side of battlefields instead of just fight in the corner and destroy the captain in. I'd love to have, let's say, brawls in bars and cities. I'd love to have that type of stuff. But the further we diverge and let's say go to stark contrast to Shogun 2, that is more large scale and completely top level focus. But the idea was simple as Shogun 2. Rock, paper, scissors. Your samurai were expensive, especially your cavalry. You had to use them as a hammer and anvil aspect within your battlefield. And each clan in Shogun 2 had their unique strengths. The Atori for the ninjas, the good the Atori for the ninjas. The Decade for the Cavalry, the order for the ability to recruit large-scale professional peasant trained armies, whereas other samurais were reluctant to use this idea, because obviously you don't want too many peasants, otherwise that upsets the social order balance. So I hope that Assassin's Creed Shadows, when presented with this opportunity, illustrates the various degrees of differences between the clans. If I fight the Decade clan, I expect to fight against the fierce cavalry. If I fight the warrior monks of Japan, that is equally I fight the warrior clans of Japan, that's who I'm fighting against. If I'm fighting against the ninja of the Atori clan, that's who I want to be fighting against. So there's going to be no shortage of specialized agents from different clans to fight that Naoi and Yasuke could use. And finally, since we seem to be coming at the end of this video, I don't want to waste too much time. But if you note, one of the aspects of the trailer for Assassin's Creed Shadows faces... But if you note... The trailer for Assassin's Creed Shadows features Yasuke destroying a samurai. 
Now, if you pause on that somewhere for one second, you will see that it is a depiction of the Takeda clan, which could be either seen as good or bad. Basically, the Takeda are going to be a big protagonist within this game. They're going to be antagonists. They're going to be a whole bunch of things. The Takeda will be a significant obstacle. They will make Odo Nobunaga's life very difficult. One of the battles that we might be seeing in this trailer as well is the Battle of One of the battles that we might be seeing is Mika Tahaga, which may be a historical battle where Yasuke is used, but Oru Nobunaga is still not able to defeat Takeda Shingen. So we could be getting one of these battles here. Do forgive me for the pronunciation as well. Now this game will explore central Japan. It will have regions like Kyoto, Kobe, Osaka, and Iga province. And in Shogun 2, you get to play this as well, but from a top level down perspective. And I'm calling it now that the Takeda clan will be the villains of this game. And the setting is also promising, you know, there's urbanization, bustling ports, samurai districts and ornate architecture. So you're going to be seeing a lot of that as well. Plus, you also get the influence of Portuguese traders, Jesuit missionaries who introduced Christianity, and new technologies like guns, cannons, etc. And in Shogun 2, you exactly have this with the arrival of the Nanban which is the black ship. And you also have the events of how these Portuguese merchants lend their expertise to the Japanese clans and the Japanese quickly adopt it. So that was another similarity that I wanted to make here. And of course, one of the hidden blades of Naoi had a bull on its hilt, probably possibly referring to the bull from AC Odyssey or Japanese mythology. Now I will go into that at a deeper time. Now of course, if you look at the last bit, which is the hunting down of that particular samurai, you will notice that the samurai's clan is not mentioned except for their distinct blue color. I think I know who it might be. It could be the Date clan. And the Date clan were perhaps one of the most powerful clans of Northern Japan during this time. But obviously we'll have to wait and see. And a note given to Yasuke by Naoi indicates that the enemy is from Takeda Castle, which I got from a very reliable source. Now of course this would this would now of course this would say that the Takeda could be represented as villains in this game. So there's a whole bunch of details that still need to be mentioned within it. I think the game is looking absolutely fantastic. And look, Assassin's Creed Shadows. If I look at it from the lens of a Total War game, from a Total War perspective, it's looking to be fantastic. There's rich historical detail, there's a huge amount of content going to be added in this game. I'm bursting looking forward to it. So this was my perspective, of a Total War player's perspective on Assassin's Creed Shadows. I will be analysing more and more of this game using Shogun 2 as a backdrop to analyse the historical events as much as I can. Now obviously I can't promise that everything is going to be tip top and perfect. But what I can say is, is that I love the game. I'll be covering more of it on my channel. And I can't wait to see what else this game is going to showcase us. I can't wait to see what else this game is going to showcase. So don't forget to leave a like, share, comment and subscribe. If I convince you entirely at all between the comparisons between the two games, great. If I haven't, well, I haven't done a good job. But if I have... Then let me know. I want to know what your opinion is. Let me know in the comment section down below. Let's have a conversation and let's go.